Hey, this is Scott from Local H, and you're watching Wheeler's Weekend Jams. Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct. It's a lovely, cold, sort of cold, Chicago it's night. It's chilly. It's a little chilly. It's chilly. I'm, I've, I'm of the opinion that uh, April is the worst month in Chicago. It's I, a bit of a tease. It is. And one every, day it's 20, one day it's 50. Yeah, every day you look out and you think it's going to be warm. You think this is going to be the day that spring starts. And it, it never is. I despise April. <laughs> it makes me want to move. Well, congratulations on Local H, your 25th year anniversary of being a band. You just came out with your new album, Hate Killer. Uh -huh. You just played, last week you played a sold out show at the Metro. You're about to go on your huge tour coming up. How does it feel? to do this, to keep on doing this thing? Uh, it feels good. I mean, you know, we're excited because we like the record a lot. Um, and, I mean, honestly, we're just excited to get out there and play, you know? And uh, I'm excited to go out west, play this stuff. Right on. And you guys record um, Hey Killer at Steve Albini's studio. Yes, some of it we did, yes. Yeah, how was uh, the recording process with this album compared to your other ones? I we say. went in there with uh, Andy Gerber and recorded the drums. Well, basically recorded everything uh, at, at Electrical Studio. And um, just spent three days there and then took everything back to Andy's studio, Million Yen, and just sort of, you know, stripped it down like, you know, kept the drums and the basics and they would just if, if the song didn't have an interesting enough guitar tone or we wanted to change color we'd do all that you know so we'd do that and we did the vocals there and stuff like that so just sort of taking the skeleton of the song and putting different colors on it and stuff like that how long was the process um we spent about a month um but i lost my voice like in in the uh it was around Christmas and I lost my voice because I got sick. And so there was a lot of days that were pretty useless where I'd go in and do a song and, and then I was done after that song. And I'd have to go home and rest up and then the next day hopefully get another song in. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and you guys put out your album as well on vinyl. There's mm -hmm. a lot of bands, obviously vinyl's coming back. And it's cool that you know you made an actual full album because it seems like a lot of bands, even new bands and older bands, are making EPs. Um, it kind of seems like because of people's you know attention spans are not people don't listen to full albums anymore. Sadly, you know, I mean, I do, but it just seems that this new thing now is EP. You know, there's always this thing where people have been saying that records, full albums are dead. You know, and and that's been going on since since we've been making records, you know? Um, I, I don't know what makes people want to say things like that. I don't know what drives people to make sweeping comments, you know? But they continue to do it and they end up looking like jackasses. Yeah. Um, people like records, you know? And, you know, people say they don't, but they do. But, I mean, that was one of the ideas with this record was to, like, you know, have a bunch of singles uh, and release a bunch of singles over the course of the year. And we just decided to scrap that idea. And, um, you know, like Pixies had made a bunch of EPs and then they put them together as a record. And like uh, the, the response to that was everybody, when the record finally came out, was like, oh, we've heard all this stuff, who cares? Mm -hmm. and I was like, well, we don't want to do that, you know? Because you used to be able to do that, like with the Beatles or the Stones, and they'd release a bunch of singles, put them together with the record, and that's what we thought we could do. But I don't think you can do that anymore. I think you can't get away with that. You guys did use the Pledge music, though, to right. record this album, and uh, how did that How did that all come together? Well, that was cool, because we were sort of able to do that and not do that. Like We could like give people rough mixes as we were making the record. So there was this thing where for like six months, people were plugged into what we were doing with the record and we could get them early mixes and you know stuff like that so so when the record came out it wasn't they hadn't heard it all and it wasn't stale and it wasn't you know been there heard that you know so that was really a, a great way for us to sort of do that idea 
but not do that idea. <laughs> a little bit of both. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm always interested, too, as well as um, the artwork of your guys' albums. And with this one, Hey Killer, it's really interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, the guy, uh, guy has a mustache, sunglasses, three faces. Uh, reminds me of, like, an early porn actor or something. Uh, how did, how yeah. did that artwork come to be? Uh, our friend um, Phil, uh, Phil Blythe, in, in, uh, he lives in L.A., and, you know, we were talking to him about doing a cover, and and uh, so he was he, he had some ideas, and we had we had the title "Hey Killer" ready to go, but we didn't have any ideas. And he was like, "Well, just give me some direction." And I was like, "All right, how about like a cross between Robert Ramirez, who was a scumbag serial killer, who was the uh, ACDC Night Brawler <laughs> murderer? Um, not really big on glorifying." serial killers so I'm loath to tell this story a little bit but sort of a cross between Robert Ramirez and the guy who hangs out at the um, at the convenience store in Ghost World as the nunchucks he's got the dumb haircut oh uh, I was thinking this Steve Buscemi no 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 it's not Steve Buscemi it's some other guy he's not in any other movie okay but he so it's like a cross between that guy and that guy and he sent that, and that was the thing that he sent. And I was like, that's perfect. Mm. So it was really cool. Well, track listing on this new album, it's just, it's just like reading a new chapter to me. It's, it's, it's very smooth. Um, I have to ask, what is the song, the track, Freshly Fucked about? Um, it's about, you know, that first, it's about, you know, fresh love you know it's <laughs> it's about like you know when you're dating somebody in those first couple months and you can't keep your hands off of each other um, and and you kind of make everybody sick you know you, you kind of like it's like oh god get a room you know so that's kind of what it's about so it, it is a love song but you know yeah it's our idea of a, there, it's our it's idea <laughs> they're not real no real drama it's just you know your married friends might get tired of it, but, but whatever. I mean, that's our idea of a love song. It's freshly fucked. Cool. That's awesome. Well, it's beautiful. I love it. It's Thank you. Favorite Thanks. No um, I have a fan question for you here. Okay. Frank Frado, uh, it's actually a two part question. Actually. All right. Frank Frado of Tinley Park asks What band heavily influenced you to become a musician? What band that influenced? Really... Um, I, I, all of them, you know? I mean, uh, I was really into Led Zeppelin. I was really into Pink Floyd. And like, you know, Roger Waters and the way that he writes lyrics and and like the, the way, you know, Pink Floyd would make concept records and stuff. I mean, that was a huge influence on me. You know, obviously, you know, making concept records, that's, that was the thing that really turned my head around. And like listening to the final cut by Pink Floyd and like, Hearing in the, the lyrics, he had like this sort of like biting, cynical sense of humor, you know. And you know, there's a song called Not Now, John, that said fuck over and over and over. And that was a big influence on me as a teenager. Um, so yeah, I mean, he, he's one of the big guys. I mean, everybody in Pink Floyd was, was a big influence on me. They definitely crossed some boundaries just with the sounds of music in general. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just really great melodies, really amazing production, and, um, and you know, and they were trippy. You know, they were all those things that, you know, I really loved uh, listening to their records and memorized all of them and totally loved it. <laughs> well, the second part of his question is he did, he went to your guys' show last week at the Metro, and mm -hmm. he was just wondering, how do you keep your endurance going on stage? I mean, you know, it's not that hard, you know, when you've got people who are there and they're, they're digging the show and, you know, you're playing at the Metro and you're just kind of happy, you know, to be there. I mean, all those shows last weekend were terrific. Um, so, yeah, just that, it's, it's not really that difficult. Like, once you get up there, I mean, I barely remember playing that Metro show. It was like, it was almost like getting into a fight or like being stuffed in a bag of weasels, you know? I just, just when I got out, I was like, what the fuck happened, you know? <laughs> it's over. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Well, I'm a huge movie buff, and this is 
completely uh, a little off the subject, but if you had to compare your band to a movie, what movie would it be and why? What movie would it be? My band. Um, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's a hard one. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't... I don't know if there's an answer to that. Um, I don't know, I mean, I, I like Goodfellas a lot, and, and I think sometimes when I make a record, I try, eh, that's not a really good answer. Um, it's a great movie. It is a great movie. Cool. I don't know. Uh, probably Satisfaction with uh, with Justine Bateman. Satisfaction? Yeah. It's about music, okay. and you know, it's about rock and roll. <laughs> so yeah, that one. Right on, satisfaction it is. Yeah. Well, Local H, you guys, tour starts this week, April 30th, July 11th. And um, if you have any words you want to say to the fans or where people could find you, go right ahead. Where they can find me? Well, you know, not like where you live, but you uh, know, yeah. uh, on the internet and all that fun stuff. Oh, well, you know, just the usual places, you know. We've got a Facebook page. My mom's got a Facebook page. Uh, we've got a website. You know, people know where to find us. Right yeah. Well, everybody, right now, go pick up the new Chicago Entertainer. Something happened to my face. Something happened to your face, but this is the new Chicago Entertainer. Pick it up. Local H is on the cover. And uh, music is where it's at. Wheelers Weekend Jams live and direct. Scott, thanks again so much Thank you. for doing this interview with me, man. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks.